Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, you're going to learn how to integrate Stripe API with your iOS Swift UI application. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, in order to integrate with Stripe API, they have a really good documentation. So let's go ahead and first start with there by going to stripe.com slash docs. Over there, you can find a link to getting started. And we're going to be doing online payments. So let's go ahead and select online payments overview. And you can see that there are multiple ways of doing integrations. You can do integration using Stripe payment links. You can do integration using Stripe checkout or even Stripe elements, which will provide you some elements that you can integrate with your Swift UI or UI kit application. We're going to select Stripe Elements. Over here on the toolbar, you can see that Stripe integration is available for web, iOS, Android, front end using Swift, Objective C, and back end using many different technologies. We're going to use iOS, Swift, and Node. Now, one of the things to point out over here is that we can literally copy all of the code for Node and make adjustments as necessary. But one other thing that is important is this key that we have. So this is the important part. You do need this key. And the question is, how do you access the key? Well, in order to access the key, in order to get the key, you need to be signed in. You can already see that I am signed in as Azam Sharp. So you have to make sure that on stripe.com you are going to create an account as a developer so that you can get access to the keys, uh, public keys and private keys. If I go ahead and open up the dashboard, this is going to take me to the dashboard. I can show you where you can find all your keys. When you're on the dashboard, you can select developers. You can open up the test mode also. You can see that I have been doing couple of different API requests. And right over here, you can find the API keys. You can see that you have two different API keys available, publishable key and the secret key. So secret key is for you. So make sure that you are not revealing it or you're not giving it to anyone. And a publishable key is the key that you basically publish. I mean, that is necessary in order to publish with uh, Stripe API. All right. Okay, let's go back. You can see all the code over here on the right hand side. This is Stripe code and this has already integrated my API key. I can simply go ahead and copy it. And now I need to host this somewhere. Now, one of the things where you can go host is Glitch. I have used Glitch before, but if you haven't used Glitch, simply go to Glitch. We can go to Glitch website. And you can see there are there's a link to create a project. So I'm going to go ahead and click on a new project. And there are many different options. Hello, Hello Node project, React project, website. So I'm going to select Hello Node. This is going to create a project for me on Glitch server. Now, I believe that by default, the Glitch server is running Fastify. And I don't really want to use Fastify. I want to use Express. Okay, so how do we use Express? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete everything from there. In order to use Express, I need to install Express. That will be as a package. So. I will open up the package.json file, add a package, search for one of the packages, which is called Express. I will simply click on it and it will install. The other package I need is for cores. Let's go ahead and add that, cross region request. And another package I will need, which is the main package, which is for Stripe. This is going to allow us to integrate 
our node or communicate our node express application with Stripe. So let's go ahead and install that just by clicking on it. You can already see that I have installed these three different packages. Let's go to the server.js. And we can now copy this code. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it right over here. All right. So this is fine. It is going to give us one single route to create a payment intent. So this is our intention or intent for the payment. And we're going to change this a little bit so that it calculates the correct amount. You can see that in order to calculate the amount, they have a function called calculate order amount, although you can name your function anything. And they are always returning you 1400. That's $14. So this is in cents. So 1400 cents, $14. The currency amount is US dollars. All right. So this is what we're going to use right now, but we will eventually change this stuff. So this is the server side, but we will change it. Okay. All right, let's go back to our application fruit store. So this is the application that we'll be working on. It's called fruit store. Some parts of the application have already been implemented so that I'm not going to start from the very scratch because we are just creating some hard-coded data. We're creating some buttons, displaying them in a list. But I do want to show you that how the application actually looks like. So let's go ahead and first see that how the application actually looks like. Because it's not really much going on in the application. It's just going to list certain items that we are selling, like apple and bananas and oranges and those kind of things. And then it will allow us to add the items to our cart. But uh, let's first make sure that our application is actually able to run so we can look at it, we can see that how it's working correctly. All right. So here it is. If I go ahead and run the application, you can see that it displays us products page, product screen. And we have a couple of different products like apple for $1, banana for $2 cherry for $3 and watermelon for $5. There is also a cart icon. So if I go ahead and add some stuff to my cart, it increments. And then eventually I can go ahead and check out, which doesn't really work right now. All of these items, all of these products are represented by the product class or the product structure. Each product has a photo and a price. And you can see that all of these products are just simply hard-coded products. All right. Whenever you try to add a particular product, so what we do is we have created a cart class which acts as a global state. So we use the add to cart function and in the items which is declared as an array of items, we add the item, which is simply a product, and that's it. So let's go ahead and try to integrate our app with the Stripe. Now, the first thing that they tell you to do when you are building the Stripe application is to register an ID. That's the most important part, uh, the default publishing key. That's something that you need to register. And you need to do that as early as possible. But before we even do that, you need to make sure that you have the Stripe package, the Stripe framework. Because currently, you can see that I don't have any Stripe framework, so I can't really access Stripe or anything related to Stripe. Let's go ahead and click on File, Add Packages. And you can see that recently I viewed a package called Stripe iOS. You can simply paste this and it will add the package. But if I go ahead and uh, try to copy it and put it right there, you can see that I can simply select the Stripe package. Make sure that the branch of that package is master. Let's go ahead and add the package by clicking on the Add Package button. Over here, which package or which product, package product we want to add. I'm just going to say Stripe is fine. It's going to be added to the target fruit store. That's the only target that we have right now. And now you can see that we have a dependency on the Stripe package. 
Let's go ahead and build our app. Okay, once the app is built, we want to make sure that we are registering the Stripe API default publishing key. The first thing I'm going to do is I will import Stripe. And we want to do that as soon as possible when the app is launched. So I'm in the fruit store app file and in the initializer, I can simply use the Stripe API dot default publishing key and we can go ahead and put the key. You can get these keys on the Stripe developer dashboard as I've shown you earlier. Okay, great. What will be the next step? Well, looking at the page over here, let's say the content view, we can see that we have all of these items and we have a checkout button, but the checkout button doesn't really do anything. So what we want to really do is when you click on the checkout button, it's going to make a request to our server and it is going to get something called a client secret ID. That's what we want. All right. Because without that, we won't be able to perform the actual checkout. So we need to get that ID. We need to get that stuff and then we probably have to save it somewhere. All right. So let's go ahead and call our function start checkout this is going to return us something we are kind of ignoring right now okay and i'm using xcode 13 all right here we go so start checkout so now we can work on starting the actual checkout this is not like paying this is just performing the checkout meaning that we are interested in these items. The first thing we need is a URL. And the whole point of this checkout is to use our own server, the one that we implemented in Glitch, and get the client secret from that particular server. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. We can also uh, calculate the items and all those kind of things. All right, so let's go ahead and first type in the name of the server. You can get the name of the server by simply changing the URL. This is the server. Just copy that URL. And the route that we are trying to go is called create payment intent. And this will be the URL. So once we have created the URL, we can go ahead and create the request, HTTP method, as well as the items and everything. There we go. You can see that we are a U U creating a URL request. HTTP method is post. Content type is application JSON. HTTP body, what we are sending, is actually the items and each or the items array, which is the array of products. Now we can use URL session dot shared dot data task with request. We can pass in the request we just created. We're going to get the data. We're going to get the response, hopefully, and the error. And obviously don't make sure to call resume. We can check a couple of things over here that if the data is return and the response code is 200, only then we will move forward. All right. Now, when I say over here, JSON decoder dot decode, so basically we're talking about the response, the actual data that we got from the server. If you look over here in the create payment intent, the actual data that you're getting from the server it kind of looks like this. It's just contain one property called client secret, and it also contains the value of that secret. That's exactly what we want. So on our client side, meaning on our iPhone side or our app side, we need to create some sort of a model in which we can decode this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a model called checkout intent or checkout intent response. 
and that is going to map to client secret. So this means that I can decode the data into it. So we're going to decode it to call it checkout intent.self data. And this is going to be try optional. This is going to return us check out intent response. Okay. Once we get the checkout intent response, we can fire the completion handler and we can get the checkout intent response dot client secret. This is going to give us at least a client secret. That's what we wanted from the completion or start completion. Now, if you scroll down in the start checkout, this is where we are getting the client secret. So let's go ahead and say client secret. We want to put the client secret somewhere. So what I have done is I have created a payment configuration share dot payment intent client secret, and I can simply go ahead and assign the client secret to it. Not a big deal because if you look at the payment config, it's simply a shared place where I can put something. And one of the things and only thing I'm putting or assigning is the payment intent client secret so that I can access it in a different pages. You might be thinking that, well, why don't you put it in the environment object? You can if you want to, but uh, for now, we're just putting it over here because I think environment object I would use it preferably for more data kind of a scenario rather than some keys and values. Other thing that we're going to do is we're going to activate this to true so that we can eventually jump on to the checkout screen. Since we are, might be in a different thread, I'm just going to make sure that we are on the UI thread when we set is active to true. Let's go ahead and build it. All right. Now, a couple of different things we want to change over here on our server over here. We want to change it. Uh, one of the things that I really want to change over here is the, how this is calculating the order. You can see that right now it's calculating the order and it's not really taking into account that what kind of information we are calculating. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to not extract out the items, but I'm just going to assign the items over here because our body itself is already an item. So we don't really need, there's no property in the body called item. Our body is the items. The other thing that I want to do is I want to calculate the actual amount. So based on the items. So items.reduce. I will get the previous item. I will get the current item. And we will have the current value. So we're just using the items.reduce. It's a array helper. There we go. And we are going to, re to calculate the price plus current.price. This is going to give us some sort of a total. And since the price have to be returned in uh, cents, so I'm just going to multiply by 100. All right. So hopefully that is going to give us calculate the total number of price. And then it's going to create this payment in 10 based on the amount. So whatever, like if it's 1400, so this means it's $14. And then we will send the client ID back. All right. So by using this particular client intent. So this is our intent to charge person $3, $5, or $20. All right, so this looks fine. Let's go ahead and resume this and see what happens if we try to add certain items to our card and try to check out. So we are adding some items. I'm gonna go ahead and say check out. All right, so you can see that it's not really taking us right now. And if I go to the tools over here, uh, terminal probably. Well, not really terminal. So how to get rid of that now. Log messages. 
it's throwing some errors uh, i'm not sure why it is throwing an error because i am multiplying total by so make sure that we are saving it correctly not sure why it is giving us issues over here so let's go ahead and try it again all right so it was a weird issue uh, but what i did is i changed the port from 4242 or whatever the port was to 8080 so i'm now running on 8080 and uh, it should be running fine now so let's go ahead and go back to our application and try to see that if it takes us to the preview or the checkout screen or not once the i'm adding the items so i'm just going to add two items i'm going to say checkout and there we go so two items total five dollars and now i need to pay so there's a button for pay but there's no way to enter the credit card number so we need to work on that part now so let's go to the checkout view the first thing we need is to show credit card number to ask for the user to enter credit card number i'm going to go ahead in the checkout view and import stripe this is where the user will be entering the credit card number now the good thing is that stripe already consists of a swift ui control that will create a payment credit card text field so let's go ahead and do that it's called stp payment card text field dot representable so that we can represent this ui kit control in sif ui dot init and now we can uh, pass in a payment method params which is a binding argument so we need to make sure that we are creating a payment uh, binding arguments so let's go on the top and we will go ahead and create this so state private var payment method params which is stp payment method params there we go and we can simply pass it right here as a bindable argument so dollar sign payment method params and as soon as we do that you will see that it will start creating the text field to enter the credit card so if i go ahead and enter some items and i go check out you can see that this automatically starts coming up this is from stripe now since we are running simply a test you can simply click over here and enter some information this is 424242 this can be anything you want just make sure it's not expired this is a cvc code and then make sure that you have the zip code so this is the correct information for testing and you can click on pay but the pay doesn't really do anything right now you can see that there is a pay function when it is fired when you click the button but the pay function doesn't really do anything so we need to figure out what goes in the pay function well the first thing we need to do in the pay function is we need to find out that do we have the secret the payment intent client secret key so let's go ahead and do that client secret payment config dot shared dot payment intent client secret else this what will we do in else well not really anything just return it what if we do get the secret then we can create a stp payment intent params so i'm just going to call it payment intent parameters stp payment intent params which will allow us to pass in the client secret so now i can pass in the client secret there we go payment intent params dot payment method params and now i can say payment method params now in order to actually submit the payment we will create what i call the payment gateway all right 
Now you can call this anything you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create a payment gateway. So I'm just gonna add a new file. And in that example, they're using a controller. So I'm just gonna use also the controller, payment gateway controller. There we go. And in the payment gateway controller, I'm gonna implement the actual payment gateway, all right? So a couple of different things I need to import. I need to import Stripe. I need to import UI Kit. And I will create a class called Payment Gateway Controller, which is going to be a UI View Controller. And one of the things about this will be that we are creating an extension on Payment Gateway Controller so that it will also be conforming to STP authentication context protocol. That's the important part. That is why we are using a UI view controller. And in order to conform to that, we need to create a function called authentication presenting view controller and return itself. Now, another function that I'm going to implement is going to call submit payment. This is the actual function that submits the payment. But instead of doing anything inside the function, what this function will actually do is it's going to take in the intent and it's going to fire a completion handler, giving you the opportunity to do anything with the status, intent, or the error. So you can see over here that we got the payment handler, STP payment handler, the Stripe payment handler. We fire in the payment, confirming the payment. But instead of doing anything over here, we simply return back a completion to the caller. So the caller can decide what they want to do. So this means that now we can go back to our checkout view and we can start using our payment gateway controller. Payment gateway controller. Make sure that we are creating an instance of it somewhere. So let's go on the top and first create an instance. Payment Gateway Controller dot submit payment. We will pass in the intent, which in this case is payment intent params. And we will get the result, which will consist of the status of the payment, the intent, and the error. In this case, the status is actually the important part for us. So we can go ahead and perform a switch on the status because the status can be anything. We will check if the status is failed. Well, then on the message, we will say failed. This message property is simply a string that we have created earlier. There we go. What about if it's canceled or if it is some other? Let's go ahead and do that canceled, then message can be, and you can be more descriptive over here. I'm just trying to save a little bit more time and write a little bit less. Here we go. Message and your payment has been successfully completed. All right, let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so that should be okay. We should have a text somewhere which is going to give us the information, the final result, as if the payment has been succeeded or not. And with that, with those changes, let's go ahead and run the application. There we go. Let's go ahead and add some items. We were going to add two, three, and we can perform a checkout. You can see it's $5. I can go ahead and enter something over here. Let's say 4242. You, this you have to enter 4242 because or else it's not going to work. That is the dummy uh, credit card that we have to use. And I'm going to say pay. And your payment has been successfully completed. So it looks like our payment has been successfully made for $5. You can always go to your Stripe and check out all the different payments and everything. You can see right over here, we just got the payment. Pretty cool, right?
So we were able to complete this payment successfully. All right. So this is all in the test mode. And there you have it. You have successfully created or integrated Stripe with your Surf UI application. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my courses on Udemy. You see that I have a lot of different courses on Udemy and including my latest course, which is Surf UI Cookbook, which consists of over 100 recipes for building your iOS applications. I also have courses for MVVM Design, Combine, Core Data, RX Swift, Intermediate Swift, Async and Await, and a lot more. Check out the links in the YouTube description and thank you so much for your support.